All right, 2.9, video two. Um, so last time we were learning about the idea of linearization or local linearization, basically approximating a nonlinear function by using a tangent line, getting the value. And what I kind of tried to show on the previous page was that as we move further and further away from our known value of x, the accuracy of um, the accuracy of our tangent line approximation deteriorates. So the accuracy of the tangent line approximation is going to get worse the further and further we move from A. And if that's the case, we could always pick a different A value if we wanted to get a better approximation for a different place on the curve. The idea is to pick something that you would already know and then go from there to use that, um, that specific known place as an approximation. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the linearization of the function at A. So notice we're not really doing any approximations here. We're actually just going to find the actual linearization function. In order to do that, we need x, we need y, we need slope. Well, they gave us x because x is our A value. So we need to find y. y is going to be what you get when you plug in your x value. If I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 2. It's not a really nice y value, but that's the y value. And then we need the slope. So we need a derivative. All right, so in order to find the derivative, as a matter of fact, let me erase that. In order to find the derivative, let's rewrite f of x. I don't really want to deal with a quotient rule on this one with a constant on the top, as well as a chain rule in the denominator. So let's just make it all of one chain rule. Let's bring the square root of 2 plus x to the top, make it a 1 half power, but since we brought it up, we make it to the negative 1 half power. So it'll be 2 plus x to the negative 1 half power. Now we can go ahead and take our derivative. Okay, it is going to be a chain rule, so we'll bring the negative 1 half out to the front. Reduce the power by 1, so that becomes to the negative 3 halves times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, so I don't have anything else to write there. Okay, we need the derivative specifically evaluated at our x value. So we need f prime of 0, which is going to be negative 1 half times 2 plus 0 is 2 to the negative 3 halves power. I'm going to rewrite that. So we got our negative 1 half. I'm going to rewrite 2 to the 3 halves power as 1 over 2 to the 3 halves power. And the reason I'm doing that is because now if you can see on the denominator there, I've got the same base. They have, both have base 2. When you multiply numbers with the same base, you add the exponent. So it's really going to be 2 to the 5 halves power in the denominator. All right, so there is my slope. Again, not a really pretty value here for the slope, but that is the slope. So now all we have to do is write the linearization function. So again, I think it's easier just to go ahead and start off in point slope form. So that's what I'm going to do, point slope form. y minus y1, which is 1 over root 2. And you can rationalize, you don't have to. Equals the slope, which is negative 1 over 2 to the 5 halves times x minus x1, which is just x minus 0. So to put this in our linearization form, we just add the y value to the right. So we're going to add 1 over root 2 to the right and change y to L of x. So our linearization is going to be 1 over root 2 minus 1 over 2 to the 5 halves. Technically, I could put x minus 0, but x minus 0 is just x, so it's just x. That is our linearization function. Okay, and we could use that to approximate things, although that would be kind of messy because of those values, but that's what we could do. So questions that you might have already asked yourself is, why would I do all this? Why not just plug the numbers into the actual function? And that's a really good question. It's a legitimate question. If you have a way to plug it in, why wouldn't you just plug it into the um, original function? It's really two reasons. The first one is not really the best reason, but it is a reason. Linear functions, so lines, are just easier to manipulate in calculations than other things are. That's not really the real reason. The real reason is oftentimes real world 
examples, real world data doesn't fit or doesn't have an actual function that's a perfect fit so that the function <clears throat> so that the function that we give is some going to be always some kind of an approximation. So if you're taking just regular data from the world, maybe it doesn't actually fit a function, but we can still use some kind of a linear approximation within a small region to approximate things. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next example. We're getting closer to the end of October here, so um, or it may already be November, depending on when we're actually getting to this. So this is kind of apropos. Suppose that after you stuff a turkey, its temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and you then put it into a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven. After one hour, the meat thermometer indicates that the temperature of the turkey is 93 degrees Fahrenheit, and then after two hours, it indicates it's 129 degrees Fahrenheit predict the temperature of the turkey after three hours. So we could make a prediction just based upon that information. It certainly looks like the turkey is getting warmer, but we're going to actually do it mathematically just to show this is um, kind of what we're doing here with a linear approximation. Let's fill in what we know, because what we do is what we need to know, well, actually, let's think about this. We are trying to predict the temperature of the turkey at three hours, okay? That means if we know what the temperature of the turkey is at two hours, and we can use some kind of a tangent line really, really close to that, um, then we can make a, a good prediction. So we know what the temperature of the turkey is at time zero, because it says that after you stuff the turkey, the temperature is at 50 degrees. That's before we even put it in the oven. So we know the temperature of the turkey is 50 degrees. At time one, or one hour, According to this, uh, after we put in the oven, the temperature is now 93 degrees. And then at time two, it's 129 degrees. We want to make the prediction for time t equals three. So we're going to let our a value be two, because right now, two hours is the closest time to time three that we have an exact measurement for. So we're going to let our a value be two. Again, that's the closest time to time three that we currently have a measurement for. So if that's the case, we don't have an exact function. So the only way to approximate our slope is to do an average slope. An average slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's what this is indicating right here. Remember that your derivative is the limit of those um, average slopes. We don't have the exact function here, so all we can do is approximate. We're going to approximate this value because we don't have the function. So we're going to approximate using the best values that we have or the closest values that we have. So t prime of 2 is going to be approximately equal to the closest average slope of known values. Well, Let's see, I know what t at 2 is, and I know what t at 1 is. I can use those to approximate the slope. So I'm going to do a t of 2 minus t of 1 over 2 minus 1. It's the best approximation I'm going to be able to get with the information provided. So that's going to be, let's see, t of 2 was 129 degrees. t of 1 was 93 over 2 minus 1, which of course is 1. So 129 minus 93 is 36. So it looks like our rate of change or our approximated slope is 36. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually put this into our equation. So to approximate t of 3, remember that we're going to go from the idea, let me write this here, that we're going to go from y minus y1 equals slope x minus, oops, x1, that should be an x1, hang on, x minus x1. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to need y1, we're going to need x1. Well, x1 we picked to be 2, so that goes here. Okay, this right here, um, we need t prime of 2. We just found t prime of 2 to be, or oops, that should be t prime of 2. We'll fill in the numbers in a second. 
we're going to need t of 2, which we have. And then the x value that we're interested in when we plug it in, the x value is actually 3, because that's what we're trying to find is t of 3. So that goes in for our x value. <clears throat> and remember that that t of 2 is your y1. We just added it to the other side. So now let's actually fill in the numbers here so we can actually get a value. So t of 3 is going to be approximately equal to, well, let's see, t of 2 was 129. The slope that we found out was approximately 36. And then 3 minus 2, of course, is 1. So really what we get is 129 plus 36, which is 165. Yeah, 165 degrees. So the temperature of the turkey is going to be approximately 165 degrees after three hours. Okay, and that was, again, that was a linear approximation using the closest known information that we had. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right here, even though it's only like at 11 minutes, but the next section is differentials, and we will do one more video on differentials, and that should be it. Oh.